in this video, you will learn how to use this uh, uh, algebraic expression and the laws of indices in solving this nice algebra math question. We are asked to solve for the value of x. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more simplified mathematics solutions. Now let's flash our mind back to a law of indices. If you have uh, a to the power of x, y, right? Uh, the powers or exponent are multiplying and this can be equal to a to the power of x multiplied by the power of y or it can also be inverted in the other way so that simply tells us that 2 to the power of 3x can also be separated and what does that mean when we have 2 to the power of 3x this can simply be equal to 2 to the power of x multiplied by the power of 3. Great. Now let's apply that into the expression given to us. From that expression, we'll have our 2 to the power of x multiplied by 3, right? Plus 2 to the power of x, and this will be equal to 10. Great. Now, having seen this, what we need to do is to simplify for that. You come to see that there is a common term here, 2 to the power of x, right? So what we are going to do, we're going to assume 2 to the power of x to be equal to the value y. So if we do that, that expression will now give us y to the power of 3 plus y, and this will be equal to 10. Great. This is more of an exponential, a, a, what we call a polynomial equation. So what we do now is to subtract 10 from both sides. So we'll have y to the power of 3 to make the equation complete, plus y minus 10, and then the right-hand side will be equal to 0. Great. So how do we simplify this expression? To simplify this expression, I want you to look at this, this way, that if we have a positive 1, positive 1 can be equal to positive 5, right, minus 4, right? And that will give us positive 1. So that means this positive y is also a positive 1. So that expression can be replaced with plus 5y and minus 4y. So if we do that, what would that give us? This will give us minus 4y plus 5y, whichever way I inverted them, it still works. That will be equal to zero. Great. Now, having seen this, what we need to do is to uh, simplify. And remember, our uh, simplifying is to find the value of why? So as to, in quadrants, find the values of x. Now, if we check this expression, you see that we have a common term here. y is common here. This will give us y squared, right? So if that gives us y squared minus 4, because this is common, and this is going to give us uh, plus 5 is common, right? We'll bring out 5, and this will be y minus 2. And all these will be equal to zero. Great. Now you notice something that we have some expressions. From this expression over here, we can simply say that our two to the power of two is equal to four. And that can replace four, right? So that expression will now give us y multiplied by y squared minus 2 to the power of 2, and all these would be plus 5, right? And this would be what? y minus 2, and this would be equal to 0. Now recall, I said earlier on, that we'll be applying a lot of uh, the algebraic formulas and the laws of indices in solving this expression. Now I want you to recall your mind back to an algebraic formula. Recall this a square minus b square, right? If you have this, this will be equal to, uh, this is uh, more of difference of two square, a plus b, right? And this will give us what? a minus b. 
Now, if we apply this with the expression that y is a is equal to y and b is equal to 2, then we'll have that whole expression to now give us this y multiplied by this whole expression will be y plus 2, right? And this will be y minus 2, right? And this will be plus 5, right? Multiply by y minus 2, right? And this will be equal to 0. Great. Now you come to see that we have two values for uh for y minus 2 and what y minus 2. We are going to bring it up. We'll have our y minus 2, that's a value, and we are going to use it to divide all other expressions. So if we have this whole expression here, divide y minus 2, what is it going to give us? y minus 2 will be gone, and then we'll be left with y multiplied by y plus 2, right? Great. Now let's look at this whole expression here. If we divide it by y minus 2, y minus 2 will be gone and will be left with what? 5. And all this expression will be equal to 0. Great. Now this is what we call the zero product uh, rule. From this zero product rule, you can come to see that we have our y minus 2 to be equal to zero. That's the first case. And in another case, we'll have this, when we expand this, will give us y square plus 2y plus y, and this will be equal to zero, plus five, and that will be equal to zero. Two different expression, one linear, one quadratic. So what do we do? We are going to solve this separate expression. From the first linear expression, if we add 2 to both sides, you'll see that y will be equal to 2. And that gives us the first solution to that expression. And recall that if y is equal to 2, recall that we said 2 to the power of x is equal to what? y. So if y is equal to 2, let's bring down the expression completely. And recall that 2 to the power of x is equal to y. So that expression will now give us 2 to the power of x equal to 2. And this can also be 2 to the power of 1. So since they have same base, according to the laws of indices, s will be equal to 1 because the powers will equate. That means the first solution to that expression is 1. That means x is equal to 1. Now let's go ahead to solve this quadratic expression. Now as we solve this quadratic expression, we are going to see that we are going to arrive at the values, other values of y. Now this is going to either give us uh, imaginary solutions or they are going to give us real solutions. Now, let's get started. We are going to see if this will give us imaginary solutions or real solutions. If we compare it to the expression ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, which is the constant, you can see that our a is equal to one, right? Our b is equal to positive 2 and our c is equal to 5. So to find out if this solution will be uh, a real or imaginary solution, we are going to find the discriminant of that uh, quadratic expression. The discriminant will be db squared minus 4ac. Now the discriminant of that expression will now be b squared is what? 2 squared, right? Good. And this will be minus 4 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 5. So 2 squared is going to give us 4 minus 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 5 is going to give us 20. So what would that expression give us? That expression is going to give us 16. And you come to see that 16 is less than 0. 
what does that tell us? That this quadratic expression is going to give us an imaginary solution. They are not going to be real solutions. So as a result of that, we are going to simply what? Neglect any solutions that will come from here and uh, work with the only solution we have, which is x is equal to 1. Now, if we check with the value of x equal to 1, to check if that solution is right, we're going to uh, uh, insert that or substitute that into the original expression we are giving. 2 to the power of 3x plus uh, 2 to the power of x, what is it going to give us? Let's check. So we have at our x equal to 1, we have our 2 to the power of 3x, right? And that is plus 2 to the power of x. Will it be equal to 10? Let's find out. At x equal to 1, we'll have our 2 to the power of 3 multiplied by 1 plus 2 to the power of 1. This will be equal to this is going to give us 2 to the power of 3 plus 2 to the power of 1. So 2 to the power of 3 is what? 2 to the power of 3 is going to give us 2 times 2. That is 4. 4 times 2 is going to give us 8 plus 2. And that will be equal to 10. So you see 10 on the left hand side equal to 10 on the right hand side. So that simply tells us that the solution x equal to 1 truly satisfies that expression that is given to us. I know you did enjoy watching this math solution. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with friends and colleagues, and remember to subscribe to my channel for more simplified mathematics solutions. Thanks so much for watching and bye-bye for now.